The Tab S7 has been in use in the All Star Space household for the last four weeks, and we wanted to take this opportunity to share with you our experiences thus far. We also wanted to take it a step further. Yes, we'll show you the changes that have occurred in those four weeks, but we'll also go through all the functions that we didn't test in the original Tab S7 review. So buckle up for brand new footage and the latest findings when it comes to working with the Tab S7. And why not? Everybody seems to be talking about the Tab S7 Plus. We got sunshine. We got all we need. If you want to see our experiences and testing with more devices, make sure you like and subscribe to be the first in the know. Okay, some housekeeping first. Our Tab S7 comes in a Wi-Fi only version, 680 bucks, 6 gigabyte of RAM, 128 gigabyte of SSD storage, expandable of course. And I know there are several versions out there. You can get an 8 gigabyte of RAM version somewhere else but not here this is what we have but it makes it even more interesting when we come to video editing it is also the mystic black version we have and i really like this color and as you know us guys we try to look at things in a different way we also have a different perspective in terms of pricing right you have an overall price for your device but what does it cost you when you go in terms of storage how much you pay for one gigabyte of storage and if you break it down the 680 divided by 128 which is the uh, storage option we have here you come to around 530 right for one gigabyte of storage and the reason why i mentioned this is when you compare this with other devices for example the new ipad air huge hype it's not about the ipad but it's about the pricing you look at this price right you have the same storage option or if you had the same storage option then you would pay almost double there are many many other things to consider but this is just one way of looking at pricing when you really compare devices when we did our initial tab s7 review video we didn't have all the accessories available but we have them now so we have the samsung official keyboard cover but we also have the official samsung book cover and we put them on a scale the tablet weight obviously didn't change but you guys can see the difference here and we had many questions with regards to what is what and how much they weigh so here is basically revealing everything you need to know in terms of can this be a laptop replacement which cover do i need to get and hopefully this is really helpful to you guys so quickly going into the keyboard cover it comes in two pieces right one goes really on a bike that is magnetically um, attached to it it doesn't come off you can actually hold the keyboard cover uh, with your tablet it wouldn't fall down it also protects your pen and then you put your keyboard on on the other side and one important thing to mention is that when you basically turn it around you flip the keyboard part on a bike um, there is no input so you can use it um, you typing one minute and then you take notes the other minute or whatever your heart desires it is all possible and the book cover is really basic but also very different and you can see here the pen sticks out right the pen sticks out when you put the book cover on as it is designed to but you have the option to put the pen in the middle on the bottom and then just put your book cover on top of it is also magnetically attached in there it will not fall out it will not charge however it will only charge on the back of the tablet itself and realistically, if you do not feel any of the original Samsung products or they may be too expensive for you or you have something already you want to use, you can. We are using an old iMac keyboard here. Randomly, we found a Logitech mouse that also works fine simultaneously via Bluetooth connected to the Tab S7. OTG also works, as you can see. And you don't have to game. You can obviously do some more useful things with a keyboard. You can do your work. You can basically um, do Microsoft Office, Word, Dex, whatever your heart desires. It all works fine with the original accessories or without. You can basically configure it the way you like it. If you plan to take your Tab S7 on the go and don't want to just do office work, right? You're boring office work. You want to do some more interesting stuff like video editing. We had a lot of questions on that. We are using Kinemaster. I hope I pronounce it right. And I don't want to spoil the section, but it works brilliantly. Look at this. We edit titles, transitions, 
pictures, you name it. Now, the best part is we put some 8K footage mixed with 4K HQ, high quality footage together with a 20 gigabyte project all together. And there was no issues. And you can see that is working well. Kinemaster is obviously not the most professional application you can have. But you know what? If you're on the go and you take pictures or you want to film something and you want to have that quick video out, not a problem. The export functions are also interesting. We've chosen 4K, 24 frames per second, the highest bitrate, and the export itself took about two minutes for a two and a half video. Again, we have 8K footage and 4K HQ high quality footage mixed with that. Why don't we continue with our creativity, with our creative streak, and we are going to Adobe Lightroom. And before we continue, if you guys recognize this guy on the right hand side here that was taken at Comic Con a couple of years ago down here in Munich, he was famous in one of the uh, biggest 80s TV show. And without revealing my age, let me know in the comments below who this guy is. Going back to Adobe Lightroom, we had no issues um, altering any of the pictures we have up to 50 megabytes. There was no issues. We put some heavy denoising on and kind of really going back and forth with everything we can do, really throwing everything at it. No issues. I kind of expected that though, because when I go back to our Tab S6 Lite test, we did pretty much the same there. We also had no issues, although the files were smaller. If you want to have something done on the go in Adobe Lightroom, you know what? No problem. Coming back to some more office usability or functional uh, usability, if you like, we have the multitasking window open here. You can see Google Drive on the left hand side, YouTube on the top right hand corner and the message window open on the bottom and there was no issues using it. But we wanted to push it further because there are, you basically cannot open the same application twice. So you cannot have a native Excel sheet and then open another native Excel sheet next to each other to compare or maybe do something or copy and paste. But we found a way to do that. If you look at this here, if you go to Office 365, which is the left hand side, which is the web based application, and then you have your native desktop application or your tablet application here, your mobile application, you can actually manage to have two of the Office applications open at the same time. It is a workaround, but it does work. So you can work on the same Excel sheets on the same Office application you wish to have open simultaneously next to each other in multitasking windows. So moving on to the display, this is another area we can only assess once we have the tablet or any device for a while, right? And there's many people who have um, basically told us they have yellow tint issues, green tint issues. There's a whole bunch of people out there that have issues with their Tab S7 screens. We don't. We have no issues. You can see that here. We have beautiful pictures of the Tab S7. We use it pretty much every single day. And I'm kind of, I'm testing it. I'm more than just using it. I'm testing it. I'm sliding the brightness down, up, down, up every single day. But I have no issues. What I want to show you guys, which we haven't done yet, and uh, apologies, that's been taken with an iPhone because we only had one sunny day and I wanted to take the opportunity to show you guys the screen outside in really uh, midday sunlight what does it look like once the screensaver is on and when you try to work on it and this is pretty much it but to summarize we have no issues with the screen and i'm sorry to hear that any of you may have and there's one area i also wanted to touch on quickly and that is the s pen and we've done separate videos already for how it works with different applications and the s pen latency obviously varies by applications and it should have the best latency with samsung native apps like the samsung notes app right what I discovered now is that the nine millisecond latency only um, is only supported on the Tab S7 Plus, not the Tab S7. And I think I've researched it also, and we don't have any scientific tests to prove that. But the Tab S7 latency should be around 26 milliseconds, which is still good. But if you are looking for that really um, super duper latency, the nine milliseconds that is advertised by Samsung, then you have to go for the Tab S7 Plus because the Tab S7 doesn't have that. 
And as always, when a new device comes out, we have to wait for third party developers to really optimize their own applications that are being provided for the Android world. And that is no different for Epic Games with Fortnite. And we were seeing 30 frames per second at the very beginning. And we kind of say that same happened with the Type 6 when it came out. The only difference is they kind of fixed it within a week. Um, and now it took them almost three or four weeks to fix it. But we only get to 60 frames per second, which is kind of disappointing because the chip itself uh, we know it can handle way more than that but hopefully there will be more updates but realistically in our test we only came to kind of between 30 and 50 frames per second so if you're looking for that really hardcore gaming device the type 7 is not for you but if you're looking for a gaming device on the go that maybe just fulfills your five minutes of gap you have then yeah why not it works so look, the Type 7 really grew on me, and I don't mean as a single device or as an Android device, as a Samsung tablet, right? I mean in relation with the Type 7 Plus. And you know what, I have to compare them for the videos, of course, but it does kind of blurred my line here a little bit. Because when I was using exclusively the Type 7 for the last four weeks, then I had no issues with anything, right? I didn't know what the screen looks like on a Type 7 Plus, for example. So everything was performing really, really well. The only thing I would say though, that is relating to both the tablets that the third party support development, application development is just not there yet. And I hope this can be sorted out in some uh, near future. But I mean, look, if Samsung could pull something off like doing their own operating system with their own applications, I think that would be the most winning device you can have. Guys, we put a lot of effort in these videos. Like and subscribe, please. Jens here and Tony, of course, from All Star Space. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comments below. Will you get the Type 7? As always, peace out and see you next time.